Hi, and welcome to lesson 11. This lesson on security and sensing starts the uh, block of next three lessons which are related to applications of quantum networks. We learned a lot how to um, design quantum networks, what are the basic building blocks. Now it's time to learn how to actually use quantum networks. In the first step, we're going to tell you about the main message of this entire block of three lessons, and that's that quantum networks can do more than just QKD. Security is one of the primary concerns when discussing architecture of classical networks. I think I don't have to tell you that uh, or convince you of the fact that communication between networks has innumerable benefits. Communication between networks is what makes the in classical internet possible. On the other hand, when we do that, the organizations that run these networks, that maintain these networks and manage them, are concerned about the, their privacy. On one hand, we want to connect and communicate, we want to allow users from round network connect to the user from a different network, but at the same time, the people that are running the network don't want to reveal too much about the inside of the network to anybody that's outside of the network. Also, clients connecting to servers in other networks often need to share sensitive information. And clearly, they don't want to reveal this information to prying eyes. And because of this large emphasis on security in classical networks, lots of discussion um, has been dedicated to security and privacy applications in quantum networks as well. And we will see that this is a natural consequence of the fact that entanglement has some amazing properties which we can make use of. So, let's talk about quantum key distribution first, before we go beyond it. Quantum key distribution is one of the earliest applications of distributed entanglement. It is a natural counter to Shor's factoring algorithm. One of the earliest exciting news about quantum technologies was the invention of Shor's factoring algorithm that, in principle, can break uh, classical uh, RSA encryption. On the other hand, what quantum technology takes away, it also provides in new ways, in the form of entanglement and quantum key distribution using entanglement. It offers information theoretic security. We learned about various quantum key distribution protocols in our previous module on overview of quantum communications. And we talked about the E91 QKD protocol that uses entanglement to distribute quantum keys. And for this reason, quantum key distribution has been hugely influential, and it really drove the development of further applications. Security will permeate most, but not all, of our discussion in the next three lessons. Most of the applications that we are going to discuss will have some element of security or some element of privacy in them. So the main question that we are asking is what clever, and not just clever, but hopefully useful ways can, can we think of that use, uh, uses distributed entanglement? So, we, we already know a few applications of bipartite entanglement. We learned about teleportation, or how we can send unknown uh, quantum states between distant nodes of a network, and we learned about the Eckert 91 QKD protocol that uses distributed entanglement in order to create unbreakable encryption. In this lesson, we're also going to talk about a different application of bipartite entanglement that's in the form of sensing. Then we will also move beyond bipartite entanglement and consider multipartite entanglement. We know uh, that multipartite entangled states exist. We learned a lot about them already. So, what are different ways that we can make use of this multipartite entanglement? Networks are capable of distributing not only bipartite entanglement, but also multipartite entanglement. And here, the questions that we're going to look at are, how can many parties share secret information with the help of a quantum network? So really, this will be a multipartite generalization of our usual QKD setting. Also, we will consider how one can detect malicious actors when engaging in multipartite quantum communication. Not everybody using a classical network or a quantum network is a fair player. Some uh, actors are malicious and they try to either break your security, break, break your privacy, or do a denial-of-service attack. 
Also, in the next two lessons, we're going to think about how we interface with powerful quantum servers. In the near future, and probably in the long future too, not everyone will have a quantum computer in their home. Number one, they're expensive to build, they're very difficult to maintain, and also they are huge, they would just not fit. So, the question is, can a client with limited quantum resources delegate the quantum computation to a quantum server? In the same way, we can delegate our classical computation to a classical server. And the answer is clearly yes. We can simply send a classical description of the quantum computation to the server. This is a trivial, trivial situation. So let's refine the question a little bit. Can the client delegate the quantum computation without revealing anything about the input, the output, or the computation itself to the server? This is a much tougher scenario. And it turns out that using quantum networks and quantum technologies, this is in fact true. And we're going to learn about the basics, how to do it.